Live. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Bears and Dragons, where a bunch of us nerdy ass bears sit around and play Dungeons and Dragons. We play Dungeons and Dragons. Thank you. That was for some reason that was the clearest I've heard you do that. Everything's better. I've changed nothing that I'm aware of. <laughs> Ever see that start? Maybe it was an of... update. <laughs> Ever see the, the, the that Stargate episode where Android or copies of the uh, SG One team got turned yeah. into or were created? It says you're better. <laughs> yes, yes, I have. I've seen all of Stargate. Love Stargate SG One. Love all Stargate, but uh, I don't think I've seen all of the universe though. I didn't like that one. It wasn't their um, suit. No, I loved Atlantis. Atlantis was very cool. That was the shit. They they improved the dialer. <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> like <laughs> later on when they got Jason Momoa. There you go. We can Can't go wrong with Jason, Jason Momoa. Absolutely. Especially, especially in his early years. Like... Alright, last time, the Wayfaring Strangers, what did they do? What happened? I don't really remember. We completed the room of the Drow statues, and in doing so, released the Ogre Mox Bane upon the poor citizens of the Underdark. And through speaking with the cleric and getting some buffs and things to not die immediately from it, our we were able to banish it completely with the help of Karad and banishment. Fucking sorcery enlightened heightened casting, bitches. And I think that's where we left off. Uh, well, we did go, go leave. Like, we finished it. We turned in the quest, and that's when we got the blessing of protection. Oh yes, that's right. I think everyone got a plus one to their AC and saving throws. Oh yes, okay. Um, but yeah, that's where we like we left off just then and there. I would like everybody to make me a persuasion check. Hey, I'm good at those. I am not. Uh, persuasion. Agent Holly in there, too. Mine's very low. You got a 20, he got a, uh, last year I got a 21, was it? I'm not sure anymore. Uh, yeah, 21. Yes. Let me reload real quick. Refresh, refresh. Like refreshing, it. refreshing. Going all the way back. <laughs> Yeah, it was a 21. See in the game log. Yeah, one more. Yeah, I'm I am nowhere. Because I do not exist. <laughs> Been a figment of our imagination the whole time. It was just a test. Okay, no. that's not showing oh. up. Make sure your uh, Beyond 20 is enabled. Like, are you seeing the little logo, like, by, up top? Yeah, it says, open a D&D &D Beyond card sheet. I get it. Oh. Go to, like, your features and, like, click on features and traits quick, and then... Oh, darn. That's probably going to do it. Sometimes when there's an update, they require you to do that, and then it will start working. There's a natural one for you. 
Oh, it was a strength. What is zero? Strength check. <laughs> zero. You oh, sprain your yeah. back. Oh, yeah. 21 for persuasion. All right. So you've been blessed. You've been. You've gotten your rewards. Uh, you are free to do as you please. I think you've only. I think you. Uh, let's see. Came out from after taking care of the draw statues. I think you did some shopping. Yeah. Uh, went and yeah. dispelled the. or banished Ogremach's Bane. And so it's probably mid to late afternoon by this time. Actually, probably early evening. You've been out for a while. I'd be curious to see if uh, all the things we've been doing lately have been spread around the area. People are talking about us. And see, we're kind of met as strangers at first in Blinden's Town. Yeah, you can yeah. you can see that the guards and and the priest, uh, after having done everything, is very happy with everything you've done and have thanked you profusely, in addition to providing you with your payment. Yeah, we were. Oh, if it's a, it's later in the day, we could always go back to the inn and meet up with the rest of the NPCs, see what they're up to, get a uh, feel for what's going on around town. Yeah. Go back to the inn. Listen in on some rumors. So I would like to to give a little bit more uh, description about your blings down here. Yeah. Because I just read some things that I totally forgot to beforehand. So anytime you get into a connecting tunnel, uh, somewhere between any of the the various area, areas, they are meant for notes. So they can walk through it uh, with ease, but uh, whenever you guys walk through it, you have to duck and squeeze uh, through it, so it does hamper some of your movement during all this, all this time. Uh, like how tall are the tunnels? Uh, a gnome could easily, and anyone who's a small race can walk yeah. through with ease. Yeah. But medium or larger must duck and squeeze. So I'm on like the short end of meat of the small end of medium. Yeah, but you're still medium, so it's probably. You like, don't have to jump uh, far. Like, <laughs> kind of just like... Punch. Like... <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we're on our way to the end? Going back to the end? Yeah. Right. Yep, I think so. <clears throat> do, 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 do. After ducking and squeezing through a few a few of the connecting chambers, you return back to the inn. You see your NPC colleagues. There. Uh, I, I uh, swing up my arms, and um, yell out, "Ron, drink! I need a drink, please." Help us out. Ryan grabs you a drink and, and and takes it to you. 
Look at your necklace. Uh, uh, I take it off, give it to him, and I, as I try my best to ignore the headache that's gonna come, but I, I try to drink it before it comes. All right. Oh, let's see here. I want you to roll me a Constitution saving throw. Do do. Fifteen. Okay. Now, I want you to roll me a dexterity check. That's check. Uh, All right. So you take it off, and you go to to drink, and just as it's as the mug is hitting your lips. Boom, boom. Pounding headache. The feeling of of dehydration. The hangover hits you hard. But you're able to drink the drink. Awesome. It's you're still in pain. Yeah. <clears throat> and I uh I get to the nearest seat <laughs> and I just Slouch there and drink. Now to whomever comes over. The light in the the tavern, thanks to various biolimps and fungi and and some uh, caged fire beetles, um, it's you would consider it to be bright light. Um, but Lassiter, it is awfully bright in here. As expected. This is my bed tonight. <laughs> I'd probably I'll head back into the kitchen. See what what's her name again? I'm Tappy. Sorry, what? Tappy foam strap. And, uh, and... Help Happy out. In the kitchen, probably that's like my go-to, or tappy, uh, my go-to type of thing. Whenever we're at the the end, is just help her out in the kitchen because I have found it to be very fun and calming to be cooking for her, and helping her out. Your enthusiasm uh, just always brightens, seems to brighten her mood. And the cooking is killer. Give me a cooking utensils check. Um, I'll just go wisdom on this. Actually, charisma. We'll go charisma. Well, I have the cooking um, thing that was with Dex. Yeah, but I think this one's going to be more, more, more charisma based. Not <sighs> about your dexterity. It's about your force of personality and how well. On the love and attention that you provide to all the food here to make it better. In any case, it's 25. <laughs> <laughs> like, efficiency and my charisma's maxed out, so. <laughs> You're rolling for cooking with love. This is Iron Chef, bitches. <laughs> The smells coming from the, uh, the kitchen are the greatest smells anyone has ever smelled in the phony mug. Damn right. <clears throat> uh, some of the known patrons start coming in and, and start inquiring about the delicious smelling food. Tappy's eyes basically goes ka -ching. Uh, and, uh, all of a sudden, there is a dinner rush. But Karad is currently in thrall the thrall of cooking the meals. You get order after order coming from Tappy. Tappy. And it just for some reason, within what seems to be seconds, the next dish is served. 
There's a blur in the kitchen. That's blur. <laughs> the cooking mama, cooking mama mini game begins. <laughs> With the uh, force of personality of, of Karad and the uh, dexterity of this uh, deep gnome uh, in in owner, everybody is served appropriately. Um, for some reason, there's a little bit too much food and a couple of plates appear in front of uh, everybody else of some very delicious smelling food. What is what does Karad have in the menu today? Give me a moment. I gotta look at the culinary guide to Underdark. Helpful. Mm-hmm. I should bookmark this. Probably see a bunch of, jet, like, a big pot, like, being dished out of, uh, tumbler stew. A few, uh... Eel pies and um, luminous roasts going out. As well as a, a couple dishes of mushroom boats. Just, just, like I said, he is just dishing the shit out of everything and it is just. This is like top level shit. Uh, during the this sudden dinner rush, uh, Suddenly, the door opens, and everybody glances at the at the door. They stop talking. The room falls into silence as the dagger dagger moths uh, enter into the inn. Oh, dagger moths! These are the uh, people who have been running the restoration of. Linden Stone. You met them several, <laughs> several okay. sessions ago. Uh, they were pr pretty non plus Digger Maddox, excuse me. You got uh, Dordo and uh, Seni. Who, who enter and they see this plethora of deep gnomes and some very odd, much larger people. Well, carry on. It seems like you're enjoying yourselves. They approach uh, the table that Laster and Cyrus out at. Uh, yep. Ron quickly hands Laster back his necklace. These guys seem important. Uh, we're just just, just travelers more. trying to find our way home. Uh, the de Digger Maddox uh, uh, approached the table and says, So, we've heard reports, says Dordo, the male. So, we've heard reports that you've helped out with plenty of people here in, in the city uh, and even helped with Dagermach, the uh, Ogremach's Bane out in Rockblight. Sounds like we might be able to reclaim that part of the city. We appreciate everything that you have done. I would be remiss this not to bring up that, well, we might have had a hand in releasing it in the first place. It was the least we could do to make it right. Uh, the female Sunny says, says, well, it's been haunting that, that part of the the city for for some time now. I don't think you released it. It just you just may have disturbed it while doing taking care of the Medusa that was in that area. 
Um, we believe that Medusa was one of the drows that had invaded our city before uh, centuries ago. Yes, we. While we were in those tunnels, too, we heard what sounded like like battles that were not being fought in the present, but like an echo, like something from the past. Uh, you you do kind of remember that as you were walking back after having the, that spell from the Mahir here happen, you didn't hear those sounds. If I did say that they were there, they weren't. Okay. Uh, from my understanding, uh, those those have been silenced. It's uh, echoes of the past. It is possible that some of the uh, echoes from the war uh, had lingered for a while. Well, and with the spell that you, that you cat that was cast, it, they have gone to rest. And we appreciate that as well. Uh, Sort of crosses his arms and says, If you would be willing, I understand you're looking for a way to get back to the surface. We do have two remaining jobs. If you complete them, we should be able to find the resources in order to assist you with returning to the surface. One of them is that there has been Rumors of some monster magic in the northwestern part of the settlement, which might be responsible for the growing number of oozes in the Blinden Stone. Yes, we we came across a very, very large assembly of them. There were hundreds, maybe even more. Did you go very far in? Says the female. Did we? Um, we we tried to, but they they blocked our path. If I remember correctly, there was an association with one of the demon lords. Uh, checking notes, please. One moment. Sorry, not, kept to everything sound, in not to sound lost or anything, but which encounter are we talking about? Talking about the place you went and saw the plethora of oozes. Here. Ah, okay. Up there. And I can't find the name of the demon lord. I know I wrote it down. It irritates me. You would like some help. There we go. Convenient. <laughs> I I started noting after that. I knew I wrote it down, and I had Zuckmoy, and, you know, I'm like, no, that's the, that's the spore one. <laughs> yes, I, I believe the Demon Lord Jubilex was associated with that area, and more and more of them came to kind of block our path from entering further. It's really disgusting. Yeah, if you find another way into that that area, and maybe go around, you might be able to find more. Or it's po quite possible you might have to fight your way through. We need to find the source of where all these oozes are coming from. If Tweebelix is is one of the the actual sources we need to determine if the Demon Lord is actually here, or if it's just an agent. Yeah, we we tried to bring this up earlier, but no one seemed very 
perturbed by it. Honestly, we, for the longest time, we have been very cautious when it came around, around to outsiders. We apologize about, about that. But you have proven yourself. Myself so far. So we would appreciate any assistance you would have with this. To, to help strengthen the city of Blingdon Stone and open us up to possibly new resources. So, mission explorer the northwestern reaches of the of Blingdon Stone. He kind of just stepped in, saw a bunch of boozes, and noped out. Uh, yeah. Well, that's I, believe we went in, I think we went in through this way last time, didn't we? Near number seven on the map. So. Yeah, I think that was it. What's your name again? I'm Dordo Diggermard Maddock, and this is my wife, Senny. And, uh, how would you spell that? <laughs> well, Turbo? and setting. The other, the other mission, Sani says, <sighs> well, my beloved husband and I kind of disagree on how to handle. In the southeastern, the southwestern portion of the city, which, because north is to the right, it's actually over in this area. There is currently there's currently a group of were rats. Didn't we come across something like that when we first arrived? Or that was just like a a rumor or a story? Yeah. I think it was just a story. Uh I believe you did hear rumors. Because there was like a community of of were rats that were living with the city, and there was some sort of dispute about them living there. Yes, that's where our Dorbo says that's where our dispute comes in. We would like you to go in and just just drive them out, slay them if you need to. Your Endless wife life. disagrees. I don't know. It's quite possible they, they were descendants from Blingdon's own citizens and they deserve to stay and rejoin the community. Just need to negotiate with them. Oh. I they are currently very me. much... Well... It was best to Where say this. The They're hostile to to us deep gnomes and since you are not uh hope i would wish for you to go and mediate and maybe see if we can come to a negotiation to keep them around they are citizens sadly under a terrible curse maybe we can help them or at least live together Cohabitate. That's the word I was looking for. You say you've had issues between your peoples because of them? Well, they are quite territorial and defensive. 
when he attempts to parley with them is met with violence. I would like you to, to venture into the woods and talk with them, or with whoever's in charge. Then we can find out whether we can work on an agreement or... Uh, and Norbo picks up or eliminate, exterminate them. Well, I think extermination is the extreme option in this situation. I mean, they are they are a uh, a people after all, a, a tribe living here. As you said, they are citizens. So, I think jumping straight into that would be a little harsh, in my opinion. So, they've essentially given you two. Two quests. One. One uh, they've dubbed to be Operation Ooze There. <laughs> Ooze There. The other. Also known as the Secret of Ooze. Secret of the Ooze. Or Operation Exterminate? Question. Exterminate. Exterminate. Quest alert. Your new quest is now I've, in your quest log. I've been listening to too many lit RPGs. There's a good chance I'm coming back to 14. Ooh. Yay. Maybe you can help Take get through the uh, FC house. I think my MMO days are done. They're never done for me. In any case, here we are in a, in a TT RPG, not an MMO RPG. Go. Um. Uh, well, if uh, when you, if you finish either of these tasks, feel free to stop by. Stop by and report back. And if we have anything that we can offer you in return, we would gladly uh, you find it. Uh, we do have a couple of things that you might be of interest. How might we find you? They're probably bad. They are. Uh, that's in Diggermatic Hall. That was what we're here. Sounds near the, bo near the bottom of the map. To your... To the center. Here. Got an idea? Did you say hall? Diggermatic Hall. Map here. So, now you should see on the map as... As... Area 14. What better way to to list things than to actually label them with the numbers that they're labeled in my <laughs> my team guide? Uh, <coughs> so, are you guys basically going to be sitting around drinking, eating, uh, and maybe listening in for conversations? Probably for the night, um, yeah. Thyra definitely is listening, but at the same time, uh, well, I guess while everyone's still eating, I'll just kind of listen in, but when everyone's kind of settling down to after dinner, just discuss our immediate plans. What is the atmosphere like right now? Uh, it's actually very jovial, at least for a couple hours, um, as everybody uh, eats the delicious food coming from the ch kitchen, uh, and also paying for it. Um, do you hear, hear some discussions about the ghost problem? Uh, that's been getting worse, that there's even spirits haunting the catacombs.
could I possibly try to stir up conversation through uh, possibly having a good time? Drinks, music, possibly music, I guess. I don't know if there's people playing music around. Uh, you know. Uh, well, uh, let's let's go ahead and with a charisma check. I don't know if you need to do pers uh, charisma. Charisma check. Not discipline. Fourteen. That is heartbreaking. <laughs> uh, you do get a few people. You get into some conversation, and you do hear hear one. You, you do end up starting to sing very drunkenly with one deep gnome uh, who's singing some sort of gnomish, uh, deep gnomish um, uh, a drinking song. And uh, you're trying to, to keep up with, with what he's saying, although you're not exactly sure of the words. And after he's done, he's, he's chuckling. He's like, hey, so, if you didn't hear from me, but apparently there's a ghost in the catacombs, which is, is actually kind of good. And uh, he's like some sort of like old general of armies or something. Uh, 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 some old barrel warrior or something. Have you, have you, have you seen anything like that? I've seen ghosts in my uh, time. Uh, I try to stay away from them. They're usually bad. Well, well this uh, one, this one isn't. It's not bad. He's, he's, he's like, it seems, seems, seems like he wants to just make sure that uh, any ghosts that might be around are, are, are put, put to rest. Stay with me, my friend. What what did you name? What did you say? Uh, his name might be. Uh, he, well, he's, I, I I've never caught what his name was, but he's like, uh, yeah. uh old barrel worm from the old days. Ah. I'm I'm sure, if he's the nicest. Um, I've heard that he is. Um, he might talk to you and might tell you his actual name. I don't know. I wasn't there. This is right here. Yeah. Wait, uh, hey, I'm hey, not sure how true how, it is, but you know, might be. The how about? I mean, if you know any over, dead gnomes that you need to put to rest or something, then maybe, 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 maybe you can help out that. Uh, maybe I don't know. Uh, I'm too drunk right now to figure out anything. All right? Can you roll me a history? Uh, can you roll me a uh, history check with disadvantage, please? Disadvantage. Yeah, you're you're currently poisoned. Oh. Oh, from alcohol. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Start to. Okay. Uh, you do remember something about a hand that you pick up picked up in 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 a ghost in Grackelstug? The, the in the tunnels. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> You don't remember I'm the specifics. Sorry. You remember that there was a deep known ghost in the tunnels, and they had you like find something of them, and so that's that's about it. We we found the hand, didn't we? Yeah. I believe so. Okay. Well, I'm not gonna tell him now. I, I don't know this guy. Uh. This is uh, this is the you, you rolled so that you could so the DM could remind you of things. <laughs> he's not he's not saying any of this. Oh, okay. So this um, is all in your head, even though it hurts. Bill. Uh, I kind of don't want to talk to this guy anymore. So I'm I'm gonna say uh I'm, I'm gonna point to uh, Syra and say, hey, you see you see that beautiful woman over there she told me that she wanted to know your name you should go talk to her mm -hmm. uh, she's not really my type 
Well, you're lost. Katal. I walk away. He, he just stands there and he's continuing and saying, saying, like, you're pretty, but no. I don't know. Couldn't. He's just mumbling about, like, like, no. I leave he's, him he's, alone. He's, like, way above his league and, and such. He's just this, like, dirty, sloppy, minor. He's, he's just a, another deep dumb, so. Okay. You said minor? Oh, minor as in M I N E R. Ew. Dear <laughs> God. What? <laughs> what are we? <laughs> oh my... Jesus Christ. Look, he's probably older than you are. Yeah, I was just like, I was trying to time. make sure what are we talking about here? Um. <laughs> uh. So, uh, I mean, did, does he sound like, seem like he's not confident or something? Like, bashful. It's like, is she so pretty that, that trying to, to hit on her, especially while he's currently as drunk as he is, probably not a great so, idea. <laughs> and probably not going to go anywhere. <laughs> not so very confident put... in himself. I have my necklace on now. Oh. Um, Headache's gone. I things are tasting um, like water again. One moment. So I tap him. I I put my hand on his shoulder. And I say, I want you to go shoot your shot at her. And I'm casting suggestion. Oh, here. Let's uh, change that into a suggestion instead of a. I want to. Yeah. And and maybe rephrase. I don't think what you're said is what you mean. <laughs> nope. Nope. Let it be as it is. Let it be as it is. No, please. I'm giving you an opportunity. I. I remember the last time we did something like this. Pretty much want him. You know, to when you go... ask for a dog. Oh my god. I'm just I saying. I want him to go seduce Syrah. Okay, so you suggest that he goes and seduces the, yeah. the pretty elf woman. Uh huh. Now, you understand that. You're going to be concentrating on this spell, and it lasts for eight hours. That's fine. So for eight hours, he's going to hit on me? Un until until I feel like the vibe is... Lyra, what are you... Else. What are you doing right now? Like, like how in this... Eh, I mean, this isn't, like, one of the best taverns in all the place. It's, it's clean, but that's about it. It's kind of rickety. The, <clears throat> the the food, well, apparently right now is super super good. Honestly, she would probably be researching through her spellbook and notes about the oozes and the where people. Um, she, probably the oozes would be more on her mind because knowing that they have a possible link to a demon lord and the other run-ins run -ins with demon lords down here, that would probably be on her... be the top thing on her mind right now. So you're just kind of sitting at a table with a whole bunch of books. Books out. Basically, eating studying food. through her books, eating crab dinner, just kind of minding her own business. Not really. No. Maybe have uh, have Silva next to her since she hasn't really uh, called on her in a while. Just taking him, taking the, the night to finally catch her breath, and after all the combat and battles and 
danger that they've been in lately. <laughs> So, basically, just kind of in her own, in her own mind. Hey, did I? Um, I changed that suggestion into wait, wait, fast getting... friends. I'm getting fast friends? You... Yeah. <laughs> what does fast friends say? Oh, no. This isn't homebrew. Is this homebrew? Uh... No, 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 I think it's the actual spell, yeah. Ooh. It's a spell, but I know what it does. I'm, ju I'm, just, I'm just not familiar with it, that's all. I'm trying to put it in the thingy. Damn it. Nope. Display in TTY. There we go. Hey, what's your, what's your DC? Eighteen. And this one is only an hour, so don't worry. Okay. All right. So while Syra is currently deep in her books, um, deep in her books uh, at a at a table, probably in a corner or something, just off to the side. Side. All of a sudden, a loud thump of a mug uh, hitting a table, and a very drunk, dirty, deep gnome uh, sits next to you and goes, Hey, beautiful. How you doing? Oh. <laughs> Again, she's been deep in thought, and then this sudden noise kind of like not scares her, just kind of startles her. She kind of shakes in her chair in a second, kind of looks up and looks at him, looks to Silva. He, he's looks got at her. this like, like, hey, like he's full of some sort of confidence, which just from, from looking at him, he is god awful drunk. She'll kind of <clears throat> clear her throat. Um, good evening. Can I can I help you with something? Um, no, it's it's fine. Just start. Uh, come to. I see you sitting over here by yourself. Hey, what are you doing? Is there any way I can help you? Any? Just a little shake of his eyebrows. Well, possibly, you actually might, but you have a little something on your, um, well, everywhere, really. Do you, do you need some help with, uh, cleanup? Yeah, well, I, I just got off work, you know. Well, here, sit down. I came yeah, over, you... had a drink, and then I saw your beautiful eyes. <laughs> she's, she's trying so hard this to be so <laughs> here why don't why don't you sit down and, and have you have you even had dinner have you had <laughs> anything he's already, uh yeah he's already seated i was like well have you had anything other than you know she's kind of like sniff at the booze in his breath anything um more hydrating to drink lately uh, I didn't think about something like that. Don't really come here for, for like, water or anything. 
Oh, it does it does wonders for your your uh, complexion. No, I have to say, I already have a nice complexion. He 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 just kind of like does the whole like semi hair flip, although he's completely bald, and he actually ends up wiping off some of the dirt on his on his, the top of his head. Here, why don't you just stay still for just a second, and she'll cast prestidigitation all over him. Just kind of. Whoa! Clean him up a Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> that is cool. You're a very nice girl. <laughs> uh, oh, woman, please. <laughs> I haven't been a girl in ages, but I, I apologize. Uh, uh, the, the, just, just trying to make you feel younger. You look so young. That's creepy. creepy. I don't know how that happened. That's a little creepy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> we went from trying to be charming to that. It's a little weird. <laughs> Why do I feel dirty all of a sudden? <laughs> On that note, I mean, well, since you, well, since you came over here, you did offer some help. So here, let me just show you this map real quick, and she'll she'll show the area of area seven here. You see, we've been trying to get through these. Um, well, we went to this door, but it was very dangerous in that area, and I'm just really curious since you know you, I'm sure you're very familiar with the area. Uh, there has to be another way around in there. Uh, I mean, a bunch of red tunnels have, like, collapse. Uh, it's quite possible you might be able to, like, like, dig, dig through some of it. Might take a while, because there's a lot of rock. Uh, I mean, I could probably get, I'd get you some help with some, like, mining picks or something like that. Um, um. Oh, but, but look at these hands. They, they're not, they're not made for such harsh labor. Well, I, they're I made mean, for you, you. You're here with like those guys, and he points over toward, towards Ront and and Gage. Ront is currently picking his nose, and Gage is just just kind of like looking the other way, kind of drinking uh, some beer and eating some meal pie. And then you see Lassiter. Concentrating on oh. yes, yeah, so I was gonna. That's what actually what I was looking at just now. I was like, "Is this concentration?" It sure is. There's, there's that, there's that. Oh, uh, water, water lady. Uh, over there, it looks looks uh, big and strong. She's not as pretty as you are, by the way. Can can uh, well, what 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 is uh uh Holly's passive perception, by the way? Average. Okay. She, Ten. She doesn't notice the thing. Yeah. <laughs> Do I notice Lassiter concentrating on a spell? Uh, give me a pers. Arcana. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, I mean, what does concentration look like? All right. Um. Uh, well, how about this? Because uh, I'm pretty sure you you know people concentrating on on a on a spell. Um, so uh, I'm gonna gonna say either a perception or insight check to kind of be able to notice it. And last, or if you want to like hide that you're concentrating on a spell, uh, you're you're wearing your necklace. Uh, uh, do a deception. Me a deception roll. We'll do a con contest here. Yeah, I'd, I'd say I'd want to hide it. Yeah, if you're not trying it. to hide it, then you don't have to roll. And and Cyrus still roll. Okay. Uh, Cyrus, it, it just looks like he's drinking water or or the or beer. Nothing seems out of the ordinary. Yes, they are my 
my friends and traveling companions for the most part. I mean, closer to I mean, closer to some others than closer to, to a few more than than the others, but he, he, we have he, kept each other safe. Yeah, I, I understand. You have such dainty hands. You would want somebody else to take care of it. I mean, I can take care of you. I can take care of you. Well, what would I can truly take care, take care of me is ways. what would truly be taking care of things for me is if you could maybe you could convince your friends to get those big strong pickaxes to get through that rubble for us that would mean so much to me yeah i think of them many of them are and he looks over at a at a uh group of what looks to be other miners uh one of them is currently like passed out drunk on the on the table just face planted in on the the table with his hand on the mug <sighs> And the other one's like ah, laughing at him and just uh, uh, talking amongst themselves. Uh, I don't think you'll be able to help right now, but um, mm, uh, mm. how much time has gone by? Um, did your concentration drop? I'm gonna say about like. 15, 20 minutes. I look at the cup. Uh, I take my necklace off and I just drink. I All lose right. concentration. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, um, yeah, um, might be able to help up that. Um, oh my, um, uh, you know what? Um, He, he looks over at Alaska, kind of like uh, uh, furrows uh, his uh, eyebrows and says I am so sorry. Although you have, I have most of what I said is totally honest. You are prettier than anybody else who is in this pub right now. Um, but uh Tell your friend it's not nice to cast spells like that on people. He points directly at Lasser. And so I'll be going, but um, I can see what I can do to help clear a path. Just to let us know where it is. Um, I think some of us will probably be staying the night because we got a bit. We got a bit drunk. He he stands up, uh, bows and says, "I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry." She'll she'll kind of look over his shoulder and look at Lassiter. What is he doing? Uh, currently uh, drinking, and he looks like he has a really strong headache. Eventually, I just put my head down and try to go to sleep. Hmm. Do you want to? Do you want to see something very funny? What's that? I think we should get him back just a, just a little bit. What do you think? That might be funny. What are you gonna do? And she'll pick up her orb and do her little motions, and she will in turn cast. <laughs> And, uh, what does Laster turn into? Into a toad. A warty, fat toad. <laughs> All of a sudden, Lassiter's there with his head on the table and... Whoosh, now well, there's a flopped out toad. Well, what... The thing is, though, it's like, if there's a saving throw, if it's an unwilling creature... Okay. Uh, he's Lassiter. asleep. <laughs> well, he said Lass he was trying to sleep. He's not asleep yet. Um, Laster, do me a favor and, and roll me a, what was it, a wisdom saving throw? Yeah. Uh, yes, 17. 
What's your action like that? Saving throw? Oh, uh, with disadvantage, please. With... You drunk, man. Ooh, he actually made it. <laughs> so, Dang. So, here's what, just for funsies... Here's what what actually happens is is he there head head down and then all of a sudden uh, this like his skin kind of turns very mottled and warty just for a second and then just goes right back. I I wake up for a second, look around, and uh, <clears throat> I take another swig. I put my head back down. <laughs> Then she'll... That was weird. Well, uh, wasn't quite the effect I I wanted on him, but I think uh, I think we've had enough fun for the evening. Yeah. And please don't don't feel bad about any of this. Thank you, I appreciate. It. But and again, I would I would appreciate your help if you're able oh. in the morning. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll have somebody drop by. I'll let, I'll let the boys know. We heard what you did with the with the ogre and my bane, and uh, 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 you've been helping out of the city. So well, uh, be great, and we would be totally willing to help you if you get it. We, we can't really get in fights. We're not like really like that. Uh, oh no, no, people. don't. But don't worry about uh, that. We can we can do a little. And here, and just back. just so you know, there's just so you know, there's no hard feelings, and she'll okay. call for a drink for him and his friends, and she'll pay up whatever needs to be paid. Yeah! He goes, hey boys, and, and he he tells him, and Tappy comes around with several drinks. It's uh, only see seeing this, he's just, he, uh, Tappy comes up to you uh, and says, "Well, Karad's been getting us a lot of." A lot of business here and because of it i'm making a lot of money and i really appreciate that i appreciate you guys so i'm gonna give you a little bit of discount just the gold for that entire table okay that's a pretty big discount for what she actually just said them or gave them and she will scoop up her books she'll snap her fingers to dismiss sova and with that she'll give them a little nod like well, I'll see you in the morning then. Have a good night. And she'll go up to her room. The as the night goes by, the crowd um, starts withering. Um, last year, you finally may be, are able to actually make it asleep. You've probably been asleep for about twenty minutes to a half hour. Uh, meantime, Ron, after seeing that you're dead asleep, uh, he fireman car- carries you out of there. Into your room, room, and everything pretty much dies down and starts being quiet. In the and everybody starts making their way back to their own rooms. I'm making my way downtown, and you yeah. all are able to get a long rest. You were able to yeah, wake looking. up in the morning. Crad probably without, definitely without a, I don't know. How, did Crad drink it all while he was doing all that cooking? No. Okay. It, he was too in the zone. Cyber probably didn't drink as much. No. He didn't have any lovely wine or anything like that, so it was all ale. <laughs> you know, I was during that whole thing, I'm looking through my spell book and I'm like, I don't want to kill him. I just want to mess with him. But <laughs> no, I'm like, I don't have anything. I don't have a lot of things Damn here. Him. <laughs> Everybody, I could have covered him spells. in webs, I guess. <laughs> so feel free to take the time to prepare your spells before we actually begin the day. And do you smell some cooking already from the, from the kitchen? Uh, some very basic stuff for for breakfast: some sausages and frothy. Fo- 
sausages, and, uh, eggs. Not sure where they came from, but they're eggs. The bread. But it's Tappy's cooking, so it's not as good as Torad's, but, you know, it's, it's, this is her job. She, she does a decent job. Yeah, I don't think there's anything I want to change. Diggers. No. Eggs. A large lizard that usually lives near the Zerkwood colonies. But very tasty and nutritious. God's gonna come in handy. Definitely. <laughs> Everybody's able to regain conscious. Lassiter, if you have your necklace on, you have no hangover. I'm gonna keep it off uh, for a bit. I need okay. Okay. Uh, no. The more the more that I drink, the more pretty much charges there are. So I'll put it on. You all wake up. Gather up in the in common room. The day is yours. What's on the agenda, guys? Well, what do you think we should do first? The were rats or the oozes? My mind has been on the oozes. I think that represents a more pressing issue than. The were rats. I mean, they've been living here now for a while, and well, there's been some issues between the peoples. It doesn't seem like a, like the more immediate threat. That sounds. That sounds good. Yeah. And thanks to. Lassiter, and she'll kind of narrow her eyes at him. Uh, I may have made some friends last night that can help us clear up a, uh, a different path towards where we last saw the oozes. Could, can I, uh, make some type of check to see if I would remember last night? Hmm. Yeah, just rolling constitution saving throw. I know it sounds weird for memory, but Wow. <laughs> okay. Uh you remember every bit of it. <laughs> I don't know what it, you remember about. the pain. You remember all the shenanigans you were you were up to. Uh Hey, but it came out um, with a good ending, right? Not quite the ending you were hoping for. I saw he would get lucky. He seemed like he needed something off his shoulder. So, and you look bored, so, you know. I can't do uh... I can't figure it. I feel so well, if you were so concerned for his well-being, you should have offered your services instead. And she'll kind of flip her hair at him and walk off. Okay, I'll remember that for later. And I'll just flip my hair and walk away. Your buzz cut. Yep. <laughs> Uh, 
So, saying that, um, are the miners from the night before here? Uh, you do see the the miner I was talking to you last night. Uh, kind of come in. He's his eyes are kind of kind of blinking. He's got a pickaxe on his back as if it was some sort of weapon. And he goes, "Oh, I'm back." Ow. Mm, drink a little too much. Uh, hey. Uh, oh. By the way, I'm I'm snoozing. Uh, I Sorry, didn't say my name last night. I apologize. Uh, thank you, man. Uh, I actually, uh, I don't remember if I ever got your name. Oh, Siren. Nice to actually officially meet you. Nice to meet you, my lady. And he gives a, a, a attempt at being a gentleman's bow. Uh, he is not one of those people who is actually a gentleman, so it looks a little awkward that he does it. Um, anyways, I understand you're trying to see if you can get into one of the, uh, stone tunnels around where our little metal gate, gate is up north. Um, there's a couple of things. We did some scouting. Uh, there's been, like, uh, near the Trader's Grotto, in addition to the, the metal door, there's, uh, another one, which actually some oozes have snuck out of. Um, uh, there's, there's a path there. There's another one right around the corner. Um, and, uh, hold on. He reaches into his side pouch and pulls out a piece of paper and folds it out and he lays it on and he produces a map of the entirety of, uh, Blinden stone. Uh, hold on. I'm going to do a slight change in the map. And you see everything now. If I turned off. Um, I've I've seen everything for a while. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, there's a collapse stone here that can go into the relative area. That's kind of further away from where you were going in. There's a tunnel here, but it's much closer to where you originally entered. Uh, there's one over here, which kind of goes into where the were rats are, but um, like a little bit to the south of it, of where the 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 oozes were. Um, there's also one um, back here. Uh, I understand that you were able to clear that out of rock elemental-ish thing. Or that was the ogre monk's bane thing, so that could help there. Um, so that's kind of your ingresses into the area. I mean, we can work on clearing that out. Uh, depending on how thick the rocks are, it might take us a while, but we could probably clear it out. Um, I would think that this one here would probably be the best if we're going to try and do both quests, because they can lead to one or the other. Yeah. So, I think that area would be the best place to do that. So, I'll look at him and point out that area in the map. How about this one here? Uh, sure. Uh, we can start work on that um, whenever you need us to. Uh, I think that's one of the easier ones for us, so it might only take a couple of hours. Uh, uh, some of the guards, I made sure, I will make sure that the guards are wearing ready in case, you know, we news that comes through there, but, you know, we'll see what we can do. Hopefully, no news. It's going to be deadly work. Or dangerous. Uh -huh. well, but You won't uh, be there alone. Yeah. Uh, if anything, we know to run. Yep, and we'll be there to protect you. Have you had breakfast, Jeff? Uh, yeah. Uh, hey, we I had some while I was at home. Uh, 
we have it doesn't like completely help with the hangover but um it's very hearty and kind of soaks things up and uh, uh by the time we actually get to work work usually we're like all peppy okay well if everyone's ready and she'll look off to uh the rest of the crew yeah, he just kind of adjusted some of his gauntlets on his armor. Chunk, chunk. Did you have to figure something out? Let's go. Let's go. Right. Uh, right. so uh goes and, and gets his fellows and they start working on the collapse tunnel. And they can only fit a couple of guys, like, actually actively doing anything, but they seem to be relatively strong uh, for for deep gnomes as they uh, easily move some rocks. They also are, are kind of studying everything. Uh, you see that they do have kind of a geological sense to them about, you know, making sure a cave doesn't collapse. Uh, you see a couple of them run off and bring some braces for the walls to kind of like make sure there's support and, I, and we don't get another collapse. After about a couple hours, uh, they are able to clear the way. They back off and... Do we see anything as the walls come down? Any oozes? Uh, in this area, it is actually a little bit darker. Um, there's more of... Uh, there is some bioluminescent uh, you know, fungi that just seem to be growing there. Um, so it didn't look like there's anything that's actually lit. So it's dim light, you could say. Wonderful, wonderful job, gentlemen. Thank you so much for that hard work you did for us. <clears throat> Is there... Is there anything that we can do for you? Uh, actually, I kind of think you're doing what you need to. Uh, a couple things to, to let you know about that actually might be something for you. Uh, you may want to consider... Okay. Um, so, uh... If what you saw in regards to this is as bad as you think it is, I mean, double check. No, do a little scouting. Uh, feel free to come back, uh, talk to us. Also, uh, you might want to make sure that you've got some support behind things because if it's bad in there, you might need help from, from other people and we might have to, to actually... Well, the day uh, Dorbo had, had said to me that if what you said for the for the oozes was as bad as it was, um, that um, we might have to have a bigger battle. So I suggest trying to like make you know try to get as many people on your side because it sounds like it might be a really bad battle um, that it would be very helpful if you help with um, take care of that. But uh, so explore, be careful. I'm back. And I understand you're also going to talk to the were rats. Um, good luck with that. I'm not sure how that goes. People have been talking about it. I don't quite understand it. Not a political person. Um, but uh, I just hope that everything goes well. Maybe they can help. I don't know. But all those uses, uh sounds pretty scary to me. So uh, also... Uh, I remembered some things from last night. I was talking to uh, you know, your mean friend over there. And he points at Lasseter. And mm -hmm. last night, while well, I was kind of drunk, and I mentioned about like rumors or ghosts, I remember some things. Apparently, when the Burr Wardens is still a ghost in, um, in one of the catacombs um, in the res residential area, um, I believe... Uh, still got a headache. Um, I believe there's a uh, one of the, the catacombs that is like 
right down there and he kind of points down the hall to, to here. Uh, if you go in, be polite. He seems to be a good buy. He, he might be able to help us. I don't know. I haven't really dealt with it. Ghosts like freak me out. But that's what, what I heard. Uh, some sort of Burr Warden is currently like in the catacombs and uh, people have said something about like laying ghosts to rest and a lot of us are like, kind of scared of the ghosts so uh, if you could talk to him a little bit maybe you can find out more information from him he might be able to help out I don't know maybe uh, yeah that's all I really you've, you've done more than enough and show how many men are there that were out here uh, about five. She'll give each one a gold piece. Yep, one of them is a girl. Or a woman. Yep. She'll give each one a gold. She's a really buff, uh, uh, minor woman. Keep doing Damn. It. Uh, she, uh, she actually kind of walks by and gives you a, gives you a flirtatious wink. She looks over at Holly and just kind of rolls her eyes. <laughs> Even Zara's so like, oh god. <laughs> just... I just want to go home. <laughs> the way is open. Uh, you see some of the guards saying, uh, we, we're going to wait out here. Uh, we're going to make sure that uh, no oozes come through here now that it's kind of more of an open place. Uh, before with the rocks, it was a little harder for them to get through. So we'll keep a guard up and make sure that all the citizens are agree. Good luck. And he gives you a salute. Thank you. <laughs> all right. So... What do you say we do what, what he suggested and do a little scouting? Uh, does anyone have a piece of wood or a sword? I guess. Uh, a piece of wood or a sword? How about this? Uh, uh, Holly, does does Holly still have um no dark vision? No, Holly does. Oh. Okay, well, never mind then. We don't have to worry about light, do we? Well, Gage doesn't. Well, oh. uh, Gage doesn't need anything. <laughs> you know, he activates Stomper. Yeah, never mind. I, uh, I prepared continual flame. You know, everyone. Nothing. Doesn't mean it's a bad thing to cast. I mean, we can all just see in black and white. We'll be able to sneak. Oh, but Dawnbreaker or Bringer. Dawnbringer. Okay. Oops. Dawnbreaker's from. Uh, <laughs> Dawnbringer, um,. Actually prefers to to be lit in these dark places. Does it still talk to you, Gage? On occasion. Does it say nice things? Yes, she is very nice. Does she like my hair? I haven't been able to groom it in a while. Not really. She could. She thinks you could use your haircut. That's expected. <laughs> Thank you for the feedback. When you enter into the area, and you find, uh, you notice a foul stench as you approach this cave. Uh, the chamber seems to be a small residential area. With homes dug into the walls at various heights, but uh, it doesn't seem like anyone's here. Here now. A pile of refuse that dominates the cave contains decomposing matter, leaving a pair of slimy, partially digested Merthedlin corpses. Gnome corpses. 
do they <clears throat> sorry do they look recent uh hard to tell give me an investigation check I'll help if needed investigation you can easily tell that these these gnomes were victims of oozes um it doesn't seem to be that recent though can't, can't really tell exactly how long uh does the smell match the smell that we might have had before when we saw the whole pile of them uh, no, this smells more like rotting flesh. Okay. <clears throat> well, we knew the general direction the giant pit was that we saw them. So, I guess, move towards this area. Uh, Are you trying to be quiet, or you're... Just walking through. I'm trying to be stealthy. I'm yeah. trying to be stealthy. Everybody roll me a stealth check. Maybe we should um, send Bills. Oh, nice. Could have sworn I had disadvantage for some reason. No, I have leather. Never mind. Never mind. Wrong goal. Um, <clears throat> come around the corner. Do we hear anything or see anything? Do things quickly here. Okay. okay. Right. Peek around the corner. And you basically see from a different angle what you saw before. And she'll halt the group and kind of point out there and just kind of give like a shh. There they are again. I want to take this opportunity to like <clears throat> go around them, maybe see what's over there. Yeah, so let's. I don't want to catch their attention too quickly. There might be more that we haven't seen yet. I don't know. I guess right around the corner there, without them noticing. Hopefully. Anything in this part of the cave? Or tunnel? Seems relatively empty. Um, any evidence of the oozes moving through here, or bodies, or anything? Uh, looking looking carefully around, you do see traces of like remnants of oozes, but no corpses or anything like that. I like to explore, so let's go up first. Why not? Find a uh, a pool of water. Uh, you do see what looks to be some ooze uh, clinging to a wall up here, but it doesn't seem to be really be doing anything. Actually, roll me a perception check. Anybody who wants to. Oh, I will. 
Uh, Gage is nothing. Zyra definitely sees uh, Uzeds, and you see more remnants of uh, of Uz-ish creatures um, that would have come through here. Uh, you do see um, see some uh, pudding hanging from a ceiling, not really doing anything, just kind of like hanging there. Doesn't seem to be making any actions. You could easily avoid it. Um, Gage is completely oblivious to everything. Uh, everybody else uh, notices the uh, gray ooze on the wall, but that's about it. You do see what looks to be a path that leads kind of in this direction. Okay. Uh, leave this guy alone, or y'all want to see how easy it is or how hard it is to kill it? I'd rather not start a fight and make a lot of noise and alert the others to our location. Makes sense. But I guess move towards the uh, way through the tunnel then. It was down this way. Mm -hmm. corner, the sound of dripping water fills this dark cave and various oozes slither across the walls and floor. Some sort of fungal wall or partition once divided the cave, but that barrier has been destroyed. Beyond it lies more wreckage and debris scoured clean by oozes. Does it look like remnants of, of old homes or dwellings? Uh, looks more like some sort of stockade. Uh, can everybody roll me another perception check? Uh, you guys do see on the floor what looks to be a a pool of reddish brown slime in the middle of the cave. Uh, it looks different than the other oozes. Is it looking aggressive or is it what's it, it doing? to be doing right, anything right now. Someone get a pebble. You see black puddings, gray oozes, ochre jellies. You see a whole bunch of different ones. They seem to be pretty passive at the moment. Um, any sort of check to see what this new ooze is? Um. Roll me an Arcana check. You're not quite sure, but it does look like some sort of aberration. I think we're getting it's not, it's, closer. It's not an ooze. Uh, whatever. Whatever that weird thing is, it doesn't seem like the rest of the oozes we've seen so far. Perhaps it, perhaps it belongs more with the with the Jublix's crowd. I think we should proceed with with caution. Um. Sounds good. 
Let's see. Saying that, I'm going to back up into the corner here. Perhaps we should proceed a little more safely. And she will cast Arcanine. The eye becomes visible, and let's see here. Go ahead and just so that you can show me where you're looking. Go ahead and put Silva on the map, and you can use. Oh wait a minute, am I? No, that one doesn't work for me. Hmm. That doesn't work for you. Okay. No, I have one here. And move so low where you want to look, and I'll describe the area. So, first I'll kind of have it over this whole wreckage, just to see what what's around it. Uh, based off your instinct, it does confirm to me some sort of, that it may have been some sort of stockades. It's just completely overrun with the uses now. And you do see uh, in a corner there look to be like some sort of shrine. Okay, no so I'll just get a little closer to it and see what it, what it might have looked like. Uh, you do see that uh, based off of the pieces, you do kind of notice pieces of like sort of fish. You do also see uh, pieces which look like it would have been some sort of representation of fungi. If you'd like to, you can roll a religion check. And as she sees that, she'll describe it to the others. Some sort of fish or fungi shrine that used to be here. Does that sound familiar to anybody? And religion. Uh, yeah, can I roll... Yeah, go ahead. That, I guess. So you said it's a religion check? Yep. No, oh, proficient. 3020. Uh, Syro, Lasser, nothing seems to come to mind. Maybe other, some other fish gods uh, in other places, but the fungus seems kind of strange. Uh, Krad, being is someone who is from the Underdark, um, and despite your kind of cloistered uh, setting, uh, you do rem remember hearing about a the father of fish and fungus, a gnomish deity named Bervon Wild Wanderer. Based on I would... Whatever you say, I would exposit in a message via can the cantrip message. Um, try to keep the stealth aspect of what we're doing up. So, slowly but surely telling every single one what it is, since we only do like one person at a time. This isn't entirely native to the, to the tunnels. So the plate, it looks, okay, so let me give you some more information regarding what you see the eye. Uh, the area looks like it was uh, a stockade fashion of zipboard and turmeric fungi. Um, and you can see some remnants of what looks to be some sort of cattle. Interesting. You do see two pools forming along the west wall that's the west yeah i does notice that there is a cave that leads a little further northeast okay so northeast we go. Oops, one more. Northeast. 
as the eye slowly moves into the cave. It sees phosphorescent lichen illuminates this cave, the floor of which is covered with pools of green slime. More green slime clings to the ceiling and forms hideous stripes along the walls. In the middle of the cave, facing east, slime covered throne. Ooh. Is the slime moving? <laughs> Uh, you do see, uh, some, um, movement. It does look to be some sort of living slime. And oh, the throne it's has... It's just slime. Excuse me. Okay. And the throne has any sort of decoration or indi indicator on it? Uh, the throne looks like it's chiseled stone and sculpted with lidless eyes and gaping mouths. A patch of green slime covers it. More patches of green slime hang from the ceiling floor. Uh, it appears I found some sort of throne here. It's kind of unusual in my opinion. At the foot of the throne is a footstool made from a squat petrified mushroom. Mushroom cap uh, looks like it might be able to be removed, like it's like there or something might come off. Uh, in the throne, as you move around the, uh, the throne, you do see a hideous looking looking deep gnome, seemingly scarred and everything is eyes just glazed over in, in, in white and sitting to either side are two large oozes or one large ooze and one smaller medium ooze. so he's sitting on the throne with two oozes next to him yep uh he's actually petting the medium ooze. Guys, I, I, there, I think there's some. I think there's one of the gnomes sitting on the throne, and it looks like he's heading the slimes with him or the oozes. Do we, do we approach? I mean, it seems kind of ominous to me. It, it, it's never a good thing with someone's petting an ooze. I mean, from what I remember, those things are burn or acidic to the touch. Yeah. <sighs> the person that gave us the quest, uh, Doom, I wrote it down. Uh, Digger Moth? Digger, Digger Matic, whatever. Um, Digger Moth. Yeah. Uh, did they want us to get rid of whatever was causing the slime problem? Uh, I might have misrepresented it. It's more of trying to get some more information. We know that there's a lot of oozes in this area, but that's all they really know about the area. So, I feel like we should probably just find out as much as we can about this. And, uh, you know, do our job. Get back to the person. You don't have to go be, uh, beyond, above and beyond. As I hover around, do I see anything further, like behind the throne or around it? Or... Pardon me, I had to sneeze. Um, you don't really see anything more than that. It's a throne. It looks like uh, he looks like a king holding court, and he's being attended by two oozes. Does it seem like he's? Speaking or communicating with it in any way, or is he just literally just sitting there? Just kind of sitting there, just absentmindedly petting 
the the small ruse. This is honestly freaking me out a little bit. I mean, he's just sitting there. Like, like he's holding some sort of court with his oozes. It's, it's, it's so bizarre. Um, I assume I see a passage this way. Yep. Let me see if there's anything else down here. No. Go through there. Seen more evidences of of ooze in an ooze infestation, but nothing much more. Um. Well, I'm curious about the main pool. So, I guess if we're not gonna get much else, we were down there earlier. So I'm gonna make my way. Oh. See what I see here. Uh, just a reminder of what you see. It, the voice you don't hear. But I will say, <laughs> as you enter this area, you remember everything about it. Just a congregation of and of a whole bunch of different uses. So nothing has changed. Okay. Does it seem like there's more than there was before? Not really. It was pretty much filling the room, so it's a little hard to tell if there was more. Okay. Mm, did not, because you have the sphere in the center. You didn't actually look into that before, but, well, there was a bunch of oozes in the way, so... Oh, well, that's true, but if I have a hovering sphere, I can, I guess, get closer to the center of this, whatever this is. So, moving around, you do see that it's a hollowed out sphere about 150 feet in diameter, elevated 10 feet off the ground, such that at the top of the sphere is 20 feet below the cave ceiling. Stone ramps without railings climb about 30 feet to four small open doorways in the sides of the sphere. A patch of green slime hangs above each door. Chamber, chambers that fill the sphere's interior seems to be scoured by the ooze creatures, leaving nothing but bare corridors and empty chambers. Even the metalwork has been corroded and eaten away. There's nothing of interest that's really... Other than a hovering sphere. <laughs> Invisible hovering sphere. I'd say that's pretty interesting. But <laughs> so she will exposit this to the group. It doesn't seem like there's any more of those oozes than we saw before, but there's a rather large hollowed out sphere that's maybe they're protecting. They're... I'm not quite sure, but well, I think we, I think we've gathered as much information as we can safely gather, unless we really want to bother the that strange gnome on the throne. You said he looked ominous. He's just sitting there, stroking his ooze. Yeah, that's usually a good sign of leaving a guy alone. Yeah. Mm, 
don't think I can do much else from that. I guess with that, I will end my spell then. Also, uh, this is what the guy looks like. Oh yeah, we're gonna leave him alone. Oh yeah, no. We're gonna leave him alone. Now, if you look like, um, that rock thing that we, uh, saw the other time, maybe. Yeah, he doesn't look cute. Now, the description we got earlier, they said that they saw the faces of, like, the ghosts, not, like, the faces of this weirdo that's sitting on the throne, right? Uh, from the rumors? Yeah. Rumors, uh, Blinged Stone has a ghost problem, which is getting worse as human spirits haunting the catacombs. There was a crazy uh, deep gnome back in the first days of Reclamation disappeared. Some of the scouts claim to have seen him skulking around the unrecovered areas in the settlement. So, this could be him then. Possibly. There was some discussion about the division about the where, what to do with the were rats. Right. Flex of service coins that nobody knows where they came from. Well, and you heard about this... the wedding celebration with the Mike and Ed. Yes. All right. Because you also heard about about the Stone Heart Enclave is closing in a solution to the threat of Orgrimmon, Spain, but that's okay because you took care of that. That is no longer an issue. This this weird this weird gnome might actually be who were who the rumors were speaking of that disappeared long ago. He may have some information about the uh, the wear rat issue as well, but I would still. How about you go in there, talk to him, and we'll send Karad and Invisible, of course, to back you up. You would you would honestly send me alone to speak with this man? I mean. Oh, but I, I just want you to understand how foolish it seems to go talk to this guy. Well, aren't we here to solve the issues to get back home? I mean, that's what I'm here for. Yeah, but there's a fine line. I mean, okay, <clears throat> to talk to him, we'd have to go past this, uh, what did you say this thing looked like in front of us? Uh, it doesn't seem like an ooze. It seems something like something different. Oh. But nothing here seems hostile or seems to have noticed, taken notice to us so far. I feel like we should maybe let someone know what we've found so far and come back with maybe some backup just in case. How about you, Karat? I may be paranoid as usual. It's just how I feel. Yeah. We're, we're here on a mission to get information. He could provide that. Now we definitely don't need to go in there half cocked and think like best be prepared that there's a high chance that this might get ugly. 
but it also doesn't mean we have to make have it like, be the ones to make it ugly. I don't like mm -hmm. the fact that he's petting oozes. That's just... And seems unfazed by it. So... Uh, when I was watching him, he wasn't... Like, his hand wasn't burning touching it, was it? Nope. Yeah, it's a little weird. It's a little disconcerting. Well, I suppose we have gathered some useful information, if nothing else. Uh, I guess we can go and let uh, the digger mo digger modics medics digger medics uh know what we found. Yeah, if anything, this person will be... telling them about this person will be interesting enough. Interesting, wait. Above game, I guess. Can, can Lassiter speak through his familiar? Yeah. Just like to find no. a familiar spell. Okay. Because you can take invocations that let you do that. So I was curious if you had that or not. Yeah, do you? I can't make this guy go away. I'm pretty sure I can't speak through him. Okay, it's a moving card. I'm going to try again, by the way. Just snap. You no. snap, okay. Okay, yeah. That's it. Is it, uh, mm -hmm. uh, little Borkat's head perks up and kind of like looks at you. Nothing kind of against like, me, but I'm kind of warming up to you, but it still would be nice to, you know, have the normal function. Nah. Yeah. You get the end session and it's like, yeah, dry. <laughs> Well, all agreement then, we'll make our way to the bigger medics and let them know what we found. I mean, you're also right in a place where you could easily access where the, the, the weir rats are. Oh. Two birds, one stone. Mm -hmm. That is true. Which where are they? Right here. They're to the south. No. Oh. Now, uh... We as players aren't supposed to see these uh boxes, are we? Mm. Uh you know what? I'm not even sure what those are. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well let's uh sneak our way back to Oh, I know what those are. I'm ignoring that. <laughs> okay. Let's uh, sneak our way back to the way we came, and... How about this little tunnel here? Alright, as you... So you're going through here, or are you in here? Um, well, we had come up through here and went this way. Mm -hmm. So I guess we would trace our way back over, and then... Seeing this tunnel, where does that go? Uh, looks like it goes down into some sort of hollow. You have this tiny opening or a small opening. Are we in a exploring mood? I'm always in an exploring mood. Let's go. All right, you look inside, and it looks like a former small residence. No one's here. Uh, you do do hear uh, some sounds coming from the south. Oh, Pop my head back out and take a look. Uh, 
Uh, is... So, uh, give me a stealth check quickly. Okay. If they see you. Pretty good for disadvantage. Mm -hmm. All right, so you see, a small crowd is gathered here. Most of the assembled cre creatures are deep gnomes, but some have rat-like creatures, including a fat specimen standing in front of the others. Others, that's about it. They don't. They they don't seem to have noticed that you do. Are deep gnomes and somehow rat like creatures. And fat specimens standing in front of the other, smiling. Okay. Well, the smiling at you with jagged buck teeth because they don't see you, you wouldn't actually be smiling at you. <laughs> All right. Well, Karad, do you, do you feel like being a, a, a diplomat today? Uh, what? I mean, I figure maybe you're from since you're, you know, from the from these parts, and you want to be part of this town in the future. Maybe if you're the one to bring peace between the two peoples, it would help your standing. That 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 sounds about right. Yeah. He just starts like mumbling off, like, God damn, yeah. You're not alone. We're, we're, we're here. We're right, we're right here with you. You got this, buddy. Shut up. You're also the highest person with charisma. I know. <laughs> the highest charisma. Yeah, but yes, he's also true. the highest person. <laughs> My charisma sucks, because yours is way better. <laughs> I hope mine would be better as a charisma caster. Right behind you. <laughs> Literally. What do you do? Uh, okay, so I, I'll I actually took this. Um, not think I was going to have to use it on myself, but all right. Um, quickly, I'm oh, going to. Oh, you know what? It's totally the wrong room. I was looking at the wrong place. You actually see only four Smith Redbone wear rats. Uh, they look to be uh, facing um, the. Um, steel door entrance to what would be this area. Oh, okay. Well, if they're not looking at us, then... Well, we can still introduce ourselves. We don't have to try and sneak our way through. Yeah. Um, so what I'm going to do... I'm doing enhance ability. Okay. Uh, choosing uh, Eagle Splendor. So for the next hour, I have advantage on charisma checks. Ooh, nice. <laughs> so uh, you kind of just see, like, all sun. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I can do this. Okay. Kind of like psyching myself up and stuff. <laughs> and go ahead and just like confidently strode in there and be like, hey guys, how's it going? Uh, let's see. 
Me no harm. Uh, they jump, turn around with, uh, some bl some short swords, short swords hey. out. Hey. Ah, where'd hey. you come from? Just, just, just came in from the door, obviously, and stuff, but here trying to make peace. How did you come in the door? The door's over there! And There's a door to... here, too. See? Pointing to where I came in, the door. What do you want? I, I... I am here on behalf of the people of Lindenstone to try to make peace with y'all. Is y'all here? They're here. They want to make everyone part of one big community. Uh, roll me a persuasion check. <laughs> they they kind of look at each, each other and says. You know, they've had some troubles in the past, but they wanted to set things aside and do what's best for Blindenstone, which is be everyone included and working together as a community. Mm. Are you the I only see, one? I, like, as I'm walking, I'm going to continue walking in and I am hoping to God other people are walking in behind. Like, I am here with some of my friends. We are all here as representatives of people, the other, the other people of Blindenstone. Mm, you're not a gnome. No. Okay. I'm assuming is is everybody else following? Please, God. So I kind of walk in and give a polite little, you know, little bow. We have been helping. We are a gr group of a, of. For fraps and stuff, and but we've been helping the people of Blend and Stone out with various things, getting rid of the Ozamox Bane, and uh, there's this Medusa thing, like terrorizing the tunnels, and we got rid of her. Um, and so we've just been doing stuff, and they, they, they know that you all are very like you guys have had bad mix-ups in the past, and they think a third party outside of Blend and Stone might be helpful to unite everyone. So they keep their swords out and says, all right, hands yeah. in the air. Mm-hmm. Gage will put his hands in the air. Being the room is a little bit better. Uh, so he, he looks at his sword for a second. And it goes out, and he puts it away, and puts both hands up. See, we, we're here in peace. We're here to work things out with everyone. All right, no funny business. And then one oh. of them, oh. he nods at uh, that one talking, nods at one of the other ones who who quickly runs off to the south. And it says, follow him. And then uh, they kind of circle around you, the the party. And Thank you. at sword uh, point, uh, escort you down to towards the south. Okay. It says, and, uh, out. Uh, avoid that space over there. Enhance ability is good for an hour. So it only takes a few minutes to to get down the down the hallway, but then you enter into a room where there's a small crowd which is gathered together here. Most of the assembled creatures are deep gnomes, and some are rat-like features, including a fat specimen standing in front of the other, smiling at you with jagged buck teeth. He's peace. The big werewolf says, he takes a step forward, arms extended, and hands open. Hypocrite's the name. I'm chief of the Gold Whisker Clan. Oh, we talk. There's about 40 were rats in this area. Wow, there's, there's a nice there's a little quite You guys are breeders. He, uh, 
motions to a set of uh, to a ser- staircase to the staircase and he uh, goes up the the steps with what seems to be a guard of a few of the were rats. I'm assuming you follow. Yes. He the stairs lead up to the top of this rise where the floor is covered with a soft and well manicured carpet of green moss. The were rat chief sits on a stone chair flanked by two giant rats. Draped over the chair's back is a cave badger pelt. Let's get down to brass hobnails then. You were sent by the digger Maddox. They want us out, right? Right? Uh, no, no, they don't want you out. They actually want want uh, uh, you all to become one big community here in Lindenstone. Work together. and They understand that there's been some hostilities in the past, but they they know now that maybe violence and trying to get rid of each other isn't the solution. That we should actually just come together. Well... They might get their wish soon enough anyways. But in a way, they ain't likely to cheer about. What's going on? What does that mean? Well, we've been having constant attacks by the oozes from the north. (laughs) We're at a point where we might be heading out. Just leave the other gnomes to fend for themselves. They don't want us anyways. Well, see, that's the thing. The oozes are causing an issue for all the other gnomes, the deep gnomes and everyone. Now, if everyone bands together and we help out everyone as well, we should be able to get rid of the oozes and everyone should be able to be able to live in Blend and Stone peacefully. Did you know there's a mysterious figure that's been controlling these oozes? We are kind of hoping that this information might strike a bargain. Apparently his figure refers to himself as the Pudding King. I remember him from when he worked in the tunnels. My kin saw him when he returned. I know who he is and what he's doing. Most of all, where he can be found. You and the Digger Maddox want? I could take you straight to him. He what calls himself the Pudding King. Well, that sounds very helpful and kind of you to provide this information, even to help us out. I bet if we all band together, we can take care of this Pudding King. Literally, Crad will do like the quotation marks. What what made him want to join forces with the pudding? With the the oozes. <laughs> with the pudding. Do Do you think we actually want to leave? I bet you nope. anything we take care of this pudding king, the rest will take care of itself. Mm-hmm. So why don't you look out and like we all band together and take care of them? Well, give me a persuasion check. So, do you think you could give me a uh, meeting with the Digger Maddox? Peaceful one. Of course I can do that. They sent us here to try to make peace with you. Alright. Pass on the message. We'll be waiting for your answer. Can, can I get the guys to let you in just fine. I suggest trying to avoid the area where the ruses come through. Those Obvious. Caved in, those caved in... The caved in areas have been great at uh, at least keeping them funneled in the right place. 
Um, can I get your name? Chipkin, I told you already. Chipkin, sorry. I... <laughs> not great with names and learning things, but I, I, I would remember that. Kripkin. All right, Kripkin. Chip you just say it like... Kripkin? Chipgrin. Chipgrin, Chipgrin. Okay. I suggest you stick around long enough to see what what comes from all this chit chat and how you do. Okay. We will get back to them as soon as possible and hopefully be back here within the hour. <laughs> For no particular reason. <laughs> nope. If I have to burn another spell slot, I'll do it, but rather not. <laughs> How right. many? Mm -hmm. How many so is you go to... back to see the dagger medics? Yes. Mm -hmm. oh, it's only six sorcery points to get the, if I have to do two level two spot, uh, spell slots. It's all for half right. mine. So you work your way back around and head off to Digger Matacall over here. Uh, just to remind you of what it looks like. Two dozen or so uh, deep gnomes uh, occupy this well-lit cavern, some moving briskly with messenger pouches in hand, while others huddle around several stone-like stone tables covered in maps and other papers, talking in hushed tones, serious tones. Back of the room is dominated by a dais ca carved from the rock of the cavern, atop of which two stone desks facing each other. Two s deep gnomes, one male and female, Gorbo and Sunny, sit behind the desk conferring with advisors and each other, turn the attention to you as you enter. Ah, you're back. What news? Um... We were able to talk to Chip Grin and all. Um, we got some information on Chip the Chip Grin. that it, uh, he is one of the guys that is like kind of like head over um, the were rats. Oh, great. Okay, so good news, says Sunny. Is that yes? Oh, and Dorbo is kind of like mm. from what we saw with the oozes. And kind of start um, do uh, have Syra save Syra uh, exposit everything we found. That we're going to need all hands on deck, including the wear rats. And I'll turn to Syra. I was able to stealthily uh, maneuver around with, with some of my magics and. Well, the tunnels are just as in, as infested with oozes as we think. And there's even some other strange creatures that don't seem like oozes, but perhaps share a more common commonality with Jublix, the demon lord. I'm not quite sure, but, but as a common... Oh... Were you not aware of the of the possible connection to the Demon Lord? Uh, Tweevix, what do we, what, what do we know about Tweevix? And just as as Sunny is is saying, what do we know about Tweevix? Uh, uh, one of the, uh, the the attendants comes up to her with a book. She goes, "Oh, thank you." Start flipping through it. Hmm, Demon Lord of Oozes. Primarily, it seems like she's in control of ooze-type creatures. Any other creatures, probably not necessarily her doing. Uh, are you sure it wasn't necessarily a creature from the Underdark? Well, we had approached that area before, and we were basically cast out by some... by some sort of voice that we couldn't quite pinpoint, but... 
it mass produced oozes to basically keep us out. Yeah, the voice you heard was with the uh, big sphere area. It wasn't where you saw the yeah. operation. No, right? No. no. Oh, yeah, that's that's what I was that's what I was referring to. And he did mention the faceless lord. Yeah. Mm, that's probably in reference <laughs> to Dweebex. Dwe uh, did you see any other creatures in the area? Yes. Oh, other than that strange, possibly an aberration creature. It seems you and the and the were people have a common threat in someone calling himself the Pudding King. We seems to be a deep gnome that has been lost in those tunnels for years and years now. Oh my. I, I I was able to spy on him sitting on a throne, petting petting some oozes. It didn't seem to affect him like it does normal people. Hmm. This is very dire indeed. And with the Pudding King comes information from uh, Chipgrin, and he knows what he's trying to do and knows more information about him and is willing to meet you guys and with, uh, with us, meet all of us together and come up with a plan and, pos and to get rid of this, possibly get rid of this person. But they want to meet with you. And he looks at Dorbo and says, If they are willing to help, we should let them help. Dorbo's like, I still think we should exterminate them. If you uh, do, looking at him, like, if you do do that, you are giving yourself a hindrance. Remember. You will need all the people possible to take care of the oozes, this. Uh, faceless Lord and possibly putting King. Roll me a persuasion check with advantage, please. Let's go! go! Please, Zorbo. Zorbo's like. Based off your descriptions, what's happening in. I don't know what you would call it. The Pudding Court, I suppose. The Pudding King. And only use all the help we can get. Alright. A bowl all right. of pudding. Penny, let's meet with this chip grid and see what we can do. Uh, can we please communicate with them? Who will meet him in the... Mm, we'll meet him at the chamber just beyond the doorway entrance that we had locked up and we'll talk in the meantime we do need to give you a reward for providing us with this information and um, the connection with this plan of were rats um what is the highest spell slot that you guys have? Five. Five, five. Yeah. Any Press full casters. Sunny uh, uh, takes a box and, and opens it up and full, pulls out a jade gem. Says, this has already been prepared as a spell gem. Uh, it does not have a spell in it right now, but you are very welcome to do use it to store a spell. Thank you. So you have acquired a jade spell gem. Okay. Into the bag of holding. So it does require attunement to put a spell into it. But once it's a tune, you don't need to be a tune. Or once the spell's in, you don't need to be a tune. The base uh, DC will be DC 17 with an attack bonus of 9. 
So it's not like you're casting the spell. It's the gem. Hmm. Which is basically like looking at my stat. Like that's basically what it would be like if I like say specifically me casting it would do. Hmm. My DC is seventeen and my attack bonus is a plus nine right now. There you go. Just means you don't have to spend the spell slot to do it. At the time. <laughs> But first, since, you need to attune to it. Since you can now change your spells every day, you can put something in there that you don't normally keep. Yeah, I'm trying to look at 5th uh, level spells. Maybe kind of the equivalent of just having a level additional 5th level spell. Because it's one and done, but you can refill it. I don't like a ring the spell story. No, it just casts at fifth level. Like, can I like? Well, I guess I could do an upcast of a lower spell. Yeah. Into there. Yep. And it will be as if it was cast at fifth. Yeah. Yeah. Well, from your roaming and exploring, I would say it's probably mid afternoon by this time. I don't know. I mean, we can take a short rest, but I mean. Just as far as just like as a rest goes. Yeah. We haven't really done much. Hmm. If nothing else, to give them time to prepare for the meeting. And I... Excuse me. Can I um, roam around uh, and try to either hear about like uh, how people feel about the rare rats, like the just civilians or not? Well, working even from people? the foamy mug, you've determined that people have mixed opinions. Okay, but they do seem that they're all loyal to the 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 digger medics so whatever they end up deciding they will definitely follow but uh, feelings is pretty much mixed so how about how they feel about the two um digger medics uh, like do they feel about feel Good about one, maybe bad about the other. Or do they just like them both? Um, we're going to use a persuasion check roll. It's not really persuasion. It's just trying to coax information from people. Persuasion. So, asking around at some of the deep gnomes, they basically say, hey, they've been leaving... They've led us here. They've been the ones pretty much in charge with this whole expedition to help revitalize and rebuild Blingdenstone after all these years. Um, they're very intelligent and uh, they're great people. Everybody seems very happy with the, uh, for lack of a better term, rulership of the bigger monarchs. Leadership, that's it. Okay. Huh. Not what I expected, but okay. Now that you have uh, some downtime, uh, to Gage would be like, hmm, didn't we speak with the, the uh, 
Deep Gnome, uh, Ghost back from Gracklesboog. Got a hand of his or something? Yeah. Oh. Um, weren't we supposed to, like, put him to rest or something? Yeah, I think we were supposed to help out with something like that. What do you, you know suppose where... we do? I don't know. Where would be the place that we would put them to rest? This guy was a deep mo no? Yeah. Uh <laughs> if I remember correctly, uh, he was we were told to bring a portion to him here to claim to rest. Oh, alright, well let's just go ahead and put his hand in the soil. I mean, wouldn't there be a more appropriate place to do that instead of just randomly bubbling in the caves? Nah, it's it's dirt. With right? the little stone hand jerry here with the cleric. I would think. Uh, maybe we should ask around. Well, we have our own little gym jar here. Hey, buddy. What, what oh, do you, you're not what back in the you? foamy mug. He's still at the foamy mug right now. <laughs> you guys go back to the foamy mug? I would think the cleric would know the best area to perform a funeral, right? Would, would last, like, a cleric would, yes, but would last at her. Yeah, we're talking uh -oh. about an actual, like, deep known cleric that you talked to earlier. Gert yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, as a group, I think we would have better judgment of, <laughs> especially living in town, the cleric that was here. Yeah, let's, let's we'll probably have the best information. Cleric. That's not me. Because, you know, I'm a cleric, and uh, for some reason, I don't know. Everybody else see, sees a uh, uh, little Borkad give Lasser a side eye. Uh, yes, let's make our way to the cleric that was here. All right. So you go back to the speaking stones, and you're able to uh, easily find a Gurnick tap finger. And he says, no. Gurnick. Welcome back. I understand you have been making progress in some diplomacy recently. Is yeah, there anything that I can do for you? We're looking for a qualified cleric to tell us where to bury <laughs> someone. What, what my friend means to say is we have the remains of a deep gnome, and we were looking for a suitable place to put him to rest. Ah, you will probably want to lay him to rest in the catacombs at the Ruby in the Rough. Come, follow me. And he will take you up here. Make and he, uh, he points you to the entrance to the catacombs. Says, Feel free to go in there and find, see if you can find a suitable spot. Um, uh, just be aware, we've heard that there's, there's been some ghosts around, although uh, the, the few that have ventured in here, well, they did get startled, um, seem to have a, a, had run into to some ghosts down there, but, uh, apparently doesn't really attack or anything, it just is very curt. Would you want to come with us to perform the... Funeral rites? Uh, sadly, uh, this is not one of my priestly, priestly duties, and uh, sadly, we do not have one appropriate in this year. Here. And besides the fact that most of the time we don't really have much, just, you know, they, the soul will be rested and uh, we bury them in the catacombs. The catacombs is pretty much the burial chamber where we put everybody. Okay. In other words, I have absolutely no idea how, how that will work, so, and uh, he thinks it would be more fun if you just went down by yourself. Okay. I mean, I wasn't expecting him to fight or anything. I was just like, if he wants to do a little prayer. So, you head into the catacombs. 
they look to be have been built mostly in a rectangular grid. Very able to easily find your way way among standing statues and funerary niches. And suddenly coming out of the wall, you see a deep gnome in which looks like he's dressed in some sort of armor and standing up straight and says, Hello, strangers. What brings you to the catacombs today? I am Burl Warden Jire. I hope you're not here to disturb the dead. I don't know why he sounds like a pirate, but he, you know, that's how, it's, how his voice is going to be. <laughs> Oh no, we we haven't come to disturb the dead. We've actually come to honor someone's uh, honor someone's memory by placing his remains here in the catacombs. Well, that's awfully nice of you. Here, follow me. And he starts marching down one of the uh, pathways. Takes a left. Okay. Uh, you follow him and he takes you to a uh, appropriate place which seems to, to have a little opening alcove and he says this one is currently open uh, what do you have? Uh, who has the hand? I assume he is in the bag of holding most likely I guess I will reach down and uncover it. And you're able to um, lay it to rest. Uh oh. I have a spell for this, I think. German? Yeah. That's one coming of age, dedication. Funerary, yeah. Um, Can you roll me a religion religion check. Pretty good. So you're able to let's see ceremony, uh, ritual spell, or you have to spend ritual. I think it's a I think it's a ritual. Can't remember. That's why I'm asking. I think it, it like for some it can be cast as a ritual, but so like I think it does have the ritual tag, but it depends on if. Yeah, it has the R next to okay, it. Okay, so it is ritual. Yeah. Cool. I believe it's a ritual, and it also takes up uh, silver, some kind of pieces of silver. To do. Ew, twenty-five gold piece worth of powdered silver. Oh, you just have uh, yeah, twenty-five gold pieces of powdered silver. I don't remember. <laughs> okay, cool. You kind of <laughs> suck if you wouldn't, wasn't able to do this. And how long is the casting time? Ten minutes. Then. Ten minutes. Instantaneous. Casting Six. time one hour. Yeah, so one hour. It's one hour to cast. So you spend oh, your geez. hour in the uh, silver. You properly oh, perform the rights. I mean, you're the ones who you wanted guys... to do this, so if I mean, you don't have to if you don't want to, but I teach one of you guys to do this. It's a level one spell, honestly. Yeah, just do it. Go ahead. It's it, it literally takes an hour. Are, are you sure? Okay. <laughs> We have. Yes, we promised to honor the dead, and we're here. So, while Lassiter is uh, taking the time to properly perform funeral rites for this hand, uh, Dagger, or Jagger, Jagger, I'm going to say it's Jagger. <sighs> You seem to be uh, good people. Maybe I can provide some help for you, but uh, I would ask that you can do some help for me. There are two people, two, I have two tasks that you can perform in order to 
lays some deep gnomes to spirits to rest. First, okay. there is Vazuk. He's been mad with grief and a threat to some of the other ref residents of Blindenstone. And he's currently a specter down in the har housing districts. In addition, there there was a deep gnome by the name of Urkask. Uh, last he was seen, he died somewhere in somewhere in the rock black section of Plindenstone. You could find his remains and bring them down here and lay them to rest. No one's sure that we, any spirits such as myself will be able to help in anything that was Kwazuk and hey. what was the other one? Uh, we have quest A. Destroy Razuk. Okay. Quest B. So defeat a bad ghost and find the remains of a uh, possibly old ghost, other ghost. I guess after we're <clears throat> done with negotiations and all that fun stuff. hour passes and um, a, some golden flames appear above the hand hand and some what looks to be some dragon wings flap out and uh, looks like the spirit of a deep gnome kind of rises up and vanishes and the flames dissipate Also, don't you feel good about doing something good for someone? Muted. Des. Yeah, sure. Feel a thwap on the back of your head. Ow. It felt. Uh, like the tail of a pseudo dragon. Mm -hmm. no. I'd say we can make our way back to the digger modics and see that they go to their meeting. And call it a night. I think this is actually a good place to stop. So I was just about to say that. Uh -huh. So next time we'll be completing additional quests and uh, preparing for a parlay. This is quite a possible. possible. Yeah. Maybe a big old battle of Blindenstone. A coup? <laughs> nah, not really. I know. <laughs> I've just always wanted to use the word and his best time as any and yeah. The battle for Blinden Deep.
Uh, totally missed it. Rejected Lava actually uh, was commenting. Oh. Uh, during the entire time. Apologize, Rejected. Sorry. Uh, sometimes I get focused and look in the chat. <laughs> but thank you for watching. Uh, we'll see you in two weeks.